One topic of discussion that often pops up when we talk about knowledge graph technology is how they compare against Relational Database Management Systems, or RDBMS, for short. Relational databases are quite different from graph databases in that they store data in tabular format, as opposed to the sort of network format we see in graph databases. Think of a relational database as a set of tables, where in a table, we have columns for each data attribute we want to capture, and each row corresponds to a specific record and its data attributes. Associations between records are handled via primary and foreign keys, the primary key being the unique identifier of a record in a given table, and the foreign key is a reference to that record stored in another table. Relational database management systems have been around for several decades, and therefore the topic of where Knowledge Graph technology sits with respect to RDBMS is a valid one. And the answer to that is it's down to the use cases and problems we're trying to approach. Graph databases have fantastic performance when it comes to the storage and retrieval of highly related data, i.e. data that is in their very nature intricately linked. They are optimized for that very purpose. Therefore, graph databases are suited for use cases where relationships across data matter a lot, and we'll be seeing examples in the next section of the course. On the other hand, relational or tabular databases are great at storing and retrieving data that need to have uniform structure, for example, transactional data, audit, and log data. However, it has been shown that relational databases are not so good at highly related data. For example, when you need to query more than five or more hops of associations, the query performance reduces dramatically as a result of table joins in relational databases. In fact, even some of the biggest well-known cloud platforms out there that are based on relational databases impose limits on the depth of query you can do. Such limits do not pose a problem to graph databases. In graph databases, because data is stored as triples, where the schema definition is itself just a triple for a piece of data, this makes graph databases incredibly flexible, extendable, and agile. Want to add new class info for a dataset? No problem, it's only a few triples away. Now, contrast that to the rigorous and enduring tabular schemas in RDBMS. Rigorous in the sense that the data architecture in RDBMS needs to be defined and adhered to from the onset. And enduring in the sense that the data architecture is not meant to rapidly change over time. What's also true is that architecting graph databases is friendly to the human brain. We do it all the time, just like we'd sketch out mind maps to capture relationships between various things. As a result of the brain-friendly nature of graph databases, this also means that the way we query the data feels very natural indeed. On the other hand, architecting relational databases requires quite specialist technical skills, and querying the data and table joins efficiently is actually pretty technical. Cool, so now on to the topic of data access and permissions. And since the nature of the data held in knowledge graphs is in the form of a network, building permission models for managing user access to different parts of a knowledge graph is something that needs to be carefully planned out and executed. There are emerging practices on how to get it right. But being relatively new compared to RDBMS, this means there's continued effort to mature this space for graph databases. With relational databases, there are well-established practices around data access and permissions, which trickle down from permission management at the database table level down to individual data record level if need be. And finally, another difference between the two technologies is around data captured over time and reporting on time sequence and time series information. Knowledge graphs typically give you a snapshot of your data at a given time. 
therefore less suited for use cases that require tracking minute and incremental data changes over time for reporting purposes. That's something that RDBMS are very good at. Due to their ability to store uniform and highly structured data, relational databases support the easy tracking of time sequence data. So all in all, for me, these are some of the main differences between Knowledge Graph and RDBMS that are worth bearing in mind, should you ever get into a debate with your fellow teammates who are proponents on either side of the fence.